So today I wanted to go over my story of how I started my Shopify store um, when I decided to build the Curl Stop in 2020. Um, and I wanted to take you down the path that I took. Now this might not be something that'll be efficient for you, but hopefully it'll be something that will help you out if you're on your journey or you're just starting or whatever the case may be. So to go back into the story, um, to go into the story, um, at the end of 2019, uh, I was starting to feel like, okay, I need to come out with the product. Like I need to launch a store. I need to launch a brand. And I had been thinking about it for some time. And then I was just like, okay, like just putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. Then January, 2020 comes around and you're starting to hear rumors. You're like, oh, hey man, the pandemic's about to hit. Like there's people saying stuff like there's, there's um, COVID everywhere and everyone's dying and the stores and grocery stores are um, having, you know, issues where there's not a lot of supplies and you're having to go and stand in line and do all these things. And things got pretty scary really fast. So my sister and I had this discussion and she tells me, she's like, and she doesn't even know this. She doesn't even know she sparked uh, <laughs> my feelings towards starting this brand. But I had this conversation with my sister and she tells me, she's like, she's emotional. She's like, I don't know how I'm gonna provide for my kids. Like, this is crazy. Like Uber stopped letting me drive. They told me to turn in my car. Like, I don't know where my next funds are coming from. My rent is gonna keep being due. And she's telling me all of this and I'm just telling her it's gonna be okay. And I had this calmness about how I felt about it. Um, and she tells me, she's like, okay, you're pretty calm about what's going on. Oh, let me do my hair while I'm doing this. You're pretty calm about what's going on. And I was just like, well, it's not that I don't feel like this is a stressful moment or this is something where I should be stressed out about, but it's just that I understand that if the whole world is crashing and everything is drowning at the same time, then the, uh, I understand that if the whole world is crashing around us and everybody is going through something, then that's something where everybody is going to be in the same situation. And when that happens, the people that have more money start to realize that the people that have less money, we're all the same people. Like we all live and die the same. So with that being said, it levels out the playing field and it makes people start making decisions to make life easier, like way quicker than they would in a normal situation. So I, t I, I felt that calmness of that, but I also felt like in these situations, Fortune 500 companies and any, any company rather, they abandon their employees because they're looking, they're looking at the situation and they're saying, well, this is business. This is a business decision. So um, long story short, not too long after that, the company I was working for at the time laid me off of work. They gave me a severance package, let me go. Didn't say how long that, uh, well, basically they, the severance only took care of like a month and a half of expenses. It didn't take care of that long, not knowing the company themselves did not know how long the pandemic was gonna last, but they didn't care. They were just like, okay, here's here's a month and a half. So the company went ahead and gave me the severance and the insurance for like COBRA insurance, but the COBRA insurance lasted like five or six months. And if anyone doesn't know what COBRA insurance is, it's basically when they extend your previous benefits for a certain amount of time past the time that you're no longer working there. So I got the COBRA benefits and I was thinking to myself, okay, I have nothing to do because I'm in a situation where they let me go. The world is ending. At this point, there was riots everywhere. People were setting cars on fire in Los Angeles. The streets were clear at night and you drove around, it was like a ghost town. It was very eerie. Um, and the situation was looking very scary at that point. Um, so I said to myself, okay, I have this $5,000. How can I maximize it to make sure that I get back? Like something that makes it to where I, if I'm replaceable at work, 
then I will still be okay because I didn't want to be in the same situation I had been in that whole time where, you know, somebody can just up and decide to lay me off randomly. So, um, I took the 5k part, part of it. I paid my bills down because I didn't know how long they, I was going to have that money and unemployment, the program for Los Angeles didn't kick in right away. So it took months for me to get that. Um, so I said, okay, I have $5,000. So I'm going to take 500 and I'm going to put it into starting the curl stop. Um, and that's going to include the product, the website, and the, um, and whatever else I need, marketing, whatever. $500 is all I'm going to have for this, which is very small. If you think about it, when I think, of, when I think back, that's a very low amount, but I was literally in a very desperate situation and, um, it was like, okay, if I don't make it work with this, then I can't make it work. And if I, if, if it doesn't work for some reason, I'm still good because 500 is not that much of a dent into what I have. I also took another thousand dollars and put it into taking a lash course, which I'm going to make a whole nother video about that story. Um, but <laughs> essentially, so I took the $500 and what I did was I went on Google analytics. I typed in different products that were on Ali, uh, AliExpress's top products. I went and typed them in on Google analytics to check and see how many visitors were interested in those products as a topic and how many people searched it. If they searched it too much, based on the numbers that I had back then, I would not want to go with the product. If they searched it too little, I would not want to go with the product. It had to be right in between. And I forgot at that time what the numbers were precisely for, for what I deemed as in between high or low or whatever. But I typed in the product, it showed me the um, the numbers for it, and I kept doing that until I found a product that I was not only interested in, because if you're gonna be selling it, you need to be interested in it, but then also something that was gonna sell because it wasn't an oversaturated market or an oversaturated product. So I found one product, which was a detangler brush. Um, I went on a bunch of websites trying to find a supplier, found a supplier and got them to put my logo on the product. Now, what's difficult about this is that majority of the suppliers want you to get a minimum order quantity. They call it an MOQ of a certain amount. So they can say, oh, you, you have to get a hundred or you have to get 500. So let's say for instance, the product is $2 and you are required to get 500, then you're required to pay a thousand dollars. And that's just the product. That's not the packaging. You still have to pay for marketing. You still have to pay for branding. You still have to pay for all these other things, the Shopify store. So I was blessed enough after doing some digging to find someone where their minimum order quantity was 50 items, so 50 items. So between all the items, I ended up getting 55 well, I had to get 55 total because the, the minimum order quantity was 50. However, the um, there was a sample. You had to get the sample. And then there was a sample with and without the logo. And then the, uh, the supplier also threw in a couple of other things. I forgot. I can't quite remember, but it ended up coming up to 55 units. So at the 55 units... Um, at a range, let's just throw out a number. Let's say if they're like $4 a unit or $3 a unit, then you have to do five times three. So that's, you know, $150 for 50 something units. So that's still within the great, a great price range, like a great price within, that's still within a great range of my budget. So I still have like 300 and something dollars left. Okay. So I placed the order after um, I sampled the product, I placed the order to have the product come in. Now, mind you, when a product's coming from overseas, it takes quite a while to get to you. So I'm have, I have at this point like a month or so lead time before the, before the product actually arrives. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, now this gives me a deadline. I want to be 
able to sell these products before they get here. I want to be able to say, okay, by the time they arrive, they're already leaving, you know? So what I did for myself is I said, okay, now I'm going to give myself 30 days to finish the rest of the things that are needed to be done to get this, you know, site launched. So I needed to come up with a brand name. I needed to come up with the color schemes. I needed to set up the Shopify store. I needed to figure out how I was gonna market the products. I needed to get the packaging. And I needed to get like accessories like stickers, things like that, things to put the actual brushes in and, and all of that. So what I started with first is I started to build the website. So I went to shopify.com. Um, I set up a plan. It's a free 14 day trial. So that was even better. I had two weeks to figure out what I needed to do um, because it was in the pandemic. Shopify was extending the 14 days. If you reached out to them, they would extend it another two weeks. So I had a full month at this point of free time on Shopify. I went to Theme Forest, found a pre-made theme and edited it to the colors that I wanted. So I found one that was closely related to what I wanted and just tweaked the color scheme on each section. And that's something I'm gonna have to do a separate video about because that took the most work out of everything I had to do. Like it literally took me a lot of time to figure out how to go through each section and get that get that edited and get that nice um, before the launch date. So I went through, did all of that. I still was in, in the $300 range. Um, this is after the store. This is after the packaging, which I got from um, the alley, which is, or the, the wholesale district in downtown LA. They have a packaging store um, on Main Street where I went to go and get the shipping um, packaging. So I have all these bubble wrap shipping packaging. I had to measure them, make sure that they could fit the brushes so that that way there was no discrepancies and I wouldn't get the brushes in the mail and then be like, oh, well, you know, the packaging now it doesn't fit, you know, all of these things. I had to account for everything. So, and, and mind you, my husband, I had been telling him I wanted to start a store for years. So my husband's watching me do all this and he's like, she's probably not gonna start it again. Then he sees me picking up the packaging and I'm like, yep, got that done. And he's like, wow. So she's actually pretty serious about this. Um, so I get to the end, I have like a hundred and something dollars left and it's almost at the deadline time. The website's done at this point. Um, the packaging is done. I get some wrapping paper. Uh, was it wrapping paper? No, it was, uh, it was tissue paper. I get some tissue paper so I can wrap the brushes up. I get some stickers from uh, Uline or no, it was Uprint. I got stickers from Uprint and I got everything situated to get ready for the launch. Um, now, mind you, this is like a week before it's over. Say hi, Ocean. Hi. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> so mind you, this is like a week before it's time to ship the product off. And so this is like a week or two, actually. It was like a week and a half left before the product is gonna be shipping off. And, and before this, I had been doing all of my marketing by word of mouth. So I started posting on Facebook, like I finally started my store. This is what I'm doing. And this was a great time to start a business because in the pandemic, when it first hit, everyone's just sitting in the house and they don't have that much to do. They, none of the stores, none of the retail stores were really open like that because they were, you know, everyone's uh, scared with the virus going around and everything. So this is a perfect time to start up something in the beauty supply space in general. But on top of that, like I said, I researched the product. So by the time I got ready to launch, everybody knew that I was getting ready to launch on my Facebook page, which I already had only like 2,500 followers at that time. My Instagram had like 4,000 followers at that time. So I had a little bit of following, but it was not nearly enough to run a full brand on. Um, and I started social media accounts for the entire brand. But uh, really what helped me out during that time was Facebook groups. So I was a part of a lot of black owned business groups at that time. And when the product launch hit, 
the people that I built up on my own were only like 10% of my total sales. The black owned business groups was the other 90%. Like I literally cannot, um, I cannot be thankful or grateful enough for those groups. So um, once the product was good to go, um, we launched, I believe, July 22nd of 2020. Um, and the day that we launched, I think I sold only like 15 brushes or so. That was the day I knew that I had something because I bought, bought 50 and by the end of that week, I was already out of the 50 and I could tell that I was already packaging up and shipping out everything I had. So I automatically went into panic mode and started to place another order with my supplier. Um, so that is essentially how I got started. Um, and in the Facebook group, groups, if you want to know, I'm going to do a separate video to go into more detail, but essentially I would just post advertisements in different groups. And I would also um, set up like these chains. Like I would do a post that said, post your business. And businesses like to support each other. So I would support someone's business. They would support mine. And it was just like an ongoing thing. So it was something that was where I was able to give back and they were giving to me as well. And it was a mutually beneficial thing. Um, but also sometimes I would just post something and someone would just buy it, you know? And there was a lot of strangers being supportive. They always say there was a lot of strange, like there, people always say that strangers are gonna be your biggest supporters. That is true. That is the biggest case. I had a lot of family members that supported. Um, as they could but the majority of my sales came from people that I did not know and at this point the curl stop still going strong now it has over 30 products um, now it's at five figures consistently every year and we're always well I got it down packed uh, where there's like inventory we redo everything we change the packaging as the times change all of that and I'm still doing organic marketing. I do not pay for marketing. Not to say that I couldn't benefit from paying for marketing, but just to say that I feel like that's a big accomplishment to be able to build that from scratch on my own and do organic sales. Um, and that's not for everybody. I come from a sales background, so that's not something where I always recommend it. But it will definitely let you know if you have a good product or not. If you're able to sell it from scratch and then later on down the line, once you build it up and you get it to a certain point, then you can begin saying, okay, I want to find other outlets for marketing. Or you can do what some people do where they build up all the marketing before the product even launches and then launch it and have a bunch of sales. So there's so many ways you can go about this, but I just wanted to tell you my story and I was hoping that it would motivate someone or get someone to say, okay, let me just start no matter how much I have, no matter what I have, um, just get up and start. <laughs> That's the main point of this video. Um, I will talk with you guys later. Thank you for joining us, all stars. And this is my channel.